All right. Um. So today. Um. So let's first run this. Otherwise, our uh, MNIST won't be downloaded. So last two weeks of a uh, uh, coding lecture, uh, we learned that um, like MNIST dataset is our uh, toy model uh, for the. Let me put this even bigger. Um. So MNIST dataset is like our toy dataset for machine learning 101. And we we learned what is generator, what is iterator, how do we turn something into an iterator, like uh, how do we retrieve the next entry of an iterator, and how do we track, whoops. So how do we track things, uh, the counter using enumerate and the flow control using try and accept. Okay. So, um, so these are like uh, will be used daily, so it will also be featured in our midterm. Um, so for example, um, we'll be given a block of code containing these flow controls and keywords, and the exam will ask, okay, what is the output, and what are the possible, you know, like uh, so if there is a code like a bug in the code, and uh, um, we will be asked to find the code. To find the bug, sorry. And then we learned what is a broadcastable tensor for the matrix vector multiplication. And uh, um, we learned how to use backward, back propagation. So today, uh, our goal is basically we'll introduce the Lego block of uh, PyTorch. Okay. Um, So what happens here is uh, um, we'll basically we'll introduce uh, what happens PyTorch, and let me uh, see. I think um, okay. so, um, and then uh, we'll use the PyTorch neural network builder. Um, to do a binary classification problem. Last, if we have time, uh, we'll learn how do we construct a class. Okay, so what is a constructor and what is the inheritance between classes and uh, how to use this uh, super command. If, if, you know, we run out of time, uh, we will learn this next week. So uh, next week we will start learning object-oriented programming. All right, and now let's first uh, import the data set. I'm sorry, import the packages. So uh, we import the data set from Torch Vision and uh, the data loader, even though we won't use it, but um, data loader is, is gonna be like an essential part of our life if uh, we're gonna be a data scientist. But anyway, so let's load the MNIST data. Um, is it, is it good? It should be good, right? <laughs> so let me just print land train. I just want to make sure, um, valid. Okay. It's good. 60,000 and 10,000. Um, so what happens here? All right. So what happens here is we retrieve only the zero and ones. So let me explain uh, what happens here. So for example, we have a tensor. Um, so here we have a tensor that is uh, um, like uh, one, like like uh, uh, from zero to nine. So for example, let's do AR1 equals train target, uh, targets. Um, let's do, um, let's do the first 20, you know like clone um okay so if we print ar1 so what we we see a bunch of labels so essentially for example the first sample is uh has a digit five the second has digit zero and etc um 
and what this code does. So for example, if, um, so if we do this, so it asks us, uh, basically we generate a mask of uh, a Boolean mask. So, so this is called a Boolean mask. Uh, and um, if we read the document, especially PyTorch, we're gonna see lots of these Boolean masks um, in the document. So what does that mean is it's literally a mask. So what happens is we basically, we masked what we don't want. So for example, if we see this, um, what it returns is a Boolean mask. If it's zero here, then this position that very entry will be masked saying true, okay? So for example, if we apply this Boolean mask on ARR1, okay? I think we have done this uh, in our homework. So uh, then we, we will only get zero. Uh, but because, because in this data set, we only have one zero, uh, then we only have uh, one zero. Let's see if it has more zero. Okay, so right now we have two zeros and uh, then we will retrieve the two zeros uh, in the first 30 entries, okay? So similarly, we can get uh, this ARR equals one, okay? So it's a bully mask of retrieving this ones. So for example, if an entry is true, it means, uh, you know, that specific entry, for example, here, 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 and here are ones. So now if we do this uh, logical or, so this is a vectorized logical or, uh, AR1 is zero. So let me add a comment. This is a vectorized uh, or operation. Let me capitalize it. And be careful, I believe if I'm using this syntax, uh, PyTorch will complain, okay? So I'm not sure because, uh, uh, let, let me just try it. Okay, so, aha, uh -huh. okay, here we go. <laughs> so is it's because actually the equal equal sign, okay? So because uh, the or is like, uh, is, so it's so order of operation. So order of operation, uh, like highest, all right? So in order, so basically what happens is, what happens is if I do this, this highlighted operation will get executed first. Um, so what we would like to do is we have to add a parenthesis here, okay? So if we do this, we'll get a Boolean mask uh, that retrieve, um, for example, all the zeros and ones. So, um, for example, the second entry is true because the second entry is a zero. Uh, the fourth entry is one, which means the fourth entry here should be true. Okay. So this is uh, how we uh, how we retrieve uh, zero and ones. So in the homework, uh, we will see more about these uh, vectorized operation. Um, so, for example. Um, is vectorized and, okay. Um, so now then um, if we look at this code, um, this is a Boolean mask. So for example, if we run this line of code, we'll generate data with only zero and ones. So we see train target equals zero. Um, this tells us the uh, Boolean mask of the entry such that with a target zero and here train target is one. So um, this is all the entry, like all the indices, Boolean mask of uh, 
the entries that with the target one. And we put a, a vertical here. This is a vectorized or. So essentially we retrieve all the zero and one index. And now we apply this Boolean mask on our all data. Okay, so this is all the chain data. So here uh, we can ignore this, uh, we can ignore this. Yeah, okay, let's still run it. So then what happens is uh, the new data, which only has uh, this many. Okay, so about, this is about like uh, uh, one fifth of all the train data. So all the train data, um, like we have uh, uh, 60,000 train data. So, but it has label from zero to nine. So we have uh, like 10 digits, but right now we only retrieve data for two digits, which is zero to one. And uh, um, it's about one fifth. So uh, it's about one fifth. And this is uh, here, we have about one fifth of the validation data. So I'll explain validation later. But right now, let's just uh, say um, we get approx approximately one fifth of the data. And here, let's visualize. So here we randomly select. So we randomly select 20 of them. So here we randomly uh, choose. 20 of them. So for example, we choose uh, from the length, uh, from zero to the length of train you, and we choose 20 of them and we plot. Um, so right now, as we can see, what's left are all zero and ones. Um, so, all right. So we've uh, we've built we've built our data we've built our data so that only zero and one left and right now this is a perfect binary classification problem okay so this is a perfect binary classification problem for example the number zero is literally class zero okay uh, and we wanna we wanna uh, we wanna build a model neural network um, gives us an output. If we put this output to the sigmoid function, um, the sigmoid out the sigmoid function will tell us whether it's closer to zero or one. So if it's if we uh, we put this output to the sigmoid function, if it's closer to zero, then we classify the sample to uh, zero class, and if the sample is uh, closer to one, we uh, we basically we put in the Okay, so right now let, let me just do a poll here. I, I just want to sh uh, make sure everyone is uh, following me um, like on the, on what we want to achieve, what we try to achieve. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is our goal: is to build a binary classifier um, that can gets us to, you know, tell the difference of these digits. So now let's uh, implement. So this is the implementation of um, the sigmoid function and uh, the cross entropy uh, function. Okay. Um, even though. The implementation looks kind of easy, right? So, um, so y hat um, is the sigmoid of the output of a uh, neural network. So the, essentially, this is like a, this is like our output of the model. Okay, and this is our like uh, true target. So uh, if it's uh, if it's class zero, then it's literally zero. And uh, if it's one, it's literally one, okay? So then we uh, implement the cross entropy. And this is a, this looks like an element-wise uh, cross entropy, okay? So it's y times the log of uh, y hat, and then uh, subtract one minus y times log of uh, one minus y hat. And the only puzzle part is why we take the mean here, okay? The answer is y is a vector, 
Okay, so now let us demonstrate. So uh, we'll demonstrate uh, sigmoid later, but it's pretty much uh, literally identical uh, to that one. So uh, I mean, the way of implementing it. So right now, right now, what we have is um, um, we generate, so we randomly generate like um, 10 samples. And then we put these 10 samples in the sigmoid function. So um, it becomes the number. So the sigmoid, so the sigmoid uh, makes a random variable. So this is normal random variable. It means basically uh, we can have uh, minus and plus entries. Uh, the sigmoid will make a random variable like between zero to one. So, and non-inclusive, okay. And we take, uh, um, so we generate like a 10 random numbers and then we take uh, um, the first 10 uh, ta from target. So the target of the train is uh, like zero to one. So uh, for example, if we see first 20, we'll get zero to one, but uh, now we only retrieve first 10. So uh, what happens is, what happens is if we plug in, so the expression here, Okay, this looks like, first of all, this looks like an element wise, uh, an element wise, like uh, cross entropy loss, all right? And if we plug in, so why, first of all, um, why hat size? They are both 10 nothing vector. Okay, so they are both torch vector of size 10. It's like a 10 by nothing vector. Um, what happens is if we run this, okay, so if we run this line of code, we basically, we get 10 numbers. And each number is the cross entropy corresponding to these two vectors, okay? So for example, if we run this, we get 10 numbers. For example, the first entry corresponds to the first samples cross entropy, okay? And similarly, the second, uh, the, 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 the second uh, number corresponds to the second, um, you know, like uh, cross entropy. And if we take mean of this, okay? So if we take mean of this, so we just copy down this. So if we take mean of this, we'll basically we get the mean of, essentially it's like a sum. So mean, which is one over N times sum of N, M, blah, 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 okay. So, and this is, this is our loss function we learned in class. So uh, if we run it, we'll get a single number. So this is an average. This is an average of the cross entropy loss. And we want this number to be as small as possible. So the other, the other um, caveat uh, I would like uh, to, to remind us is this implementation. Okay, so this implementation need one requirement. So there is a Python, there is a Python. Um, so there is a Python um, keywords called assert. So what we need to do is we need to assert the Y's size is the same as uh, Y hat size. So we need to uh, assize, we need to uh, make sure like what happens uh, this, we need to basically the assert, okay? So the assert is a keyword so that uh, this expression must be true. Otherwise um, our function refuses to go on. Okay, we stop here. So let's let's see if this is true. So for example, in this case, 
Uh, in this case, it's true. It's because... Uh... Oh, sorry. Um... Alright, I just need to use this. True. My bad. So, what happens is we need to make sure these two are true. Okay, so this would be bad. Let me explain why this would be bad. So as we can see here, y hat size is not y size anymore. So if we uh, if we do this, um, you know, it tells us this is false. Okay. And uh, now if we try to plug into the same thing because uh so as we can see here y size is like uh five nothing it's like a five vector but this one has a shape of five one so if we uh print y hat uh it's like um it's something like this but uh if we do y y is like a row okay if we implement the exact cross entropy function uh, we'll get we'll be in trouble. Let's see why. So let's copy this and paste. Um, it here. So what we hope is we have five sample here, right? We have five sample here. However, and so if we have five sample here, what we hope is we hope to get five numbers. Uh, but if we run this cell of code, we're going to get a matrix. Then that's where we get into trouble. So as we can see here. So this is because, okay. This is because, um, this is because like a, a row matrix times, so this times, because uh, it generates, so this is uh, this is a typical example of a broadcastable like this type of entry. So for example, so if we put this, okay. So it, we we don't we even um, we even do not. Why have a one? Oh, this is line. Okay. So I I don't I even do not have. So for example, um, oops. So we can we can simply try this, and we get a matrix. This is because um, largely what happens is if we do this, okay, we get that. But we multiply with the row vector, so it's pretty much like uh, it's getting broadcasted to the shape, so that uh, because this has five like five columns, one row, and this has uh, uh, one column, five rows. So when we do that, we'll get a five by five matrix. So, so we're going doing this, all right? So we need to make sure when we implement our loss function, okay? When we implement our loss function the output of a neural network and this uh, uh, the target should be the same size. So, um, okay. And similar, the sigmoid is similar. So sigmoid is just the way apply the sigmoid function to the y hat. All right. Um, and do, I do wanna have a remark. Um, so um, these functions, so these functions uh, are implemented uh, in uh, torch functional module, so functional module in torch. Um, when we implement, you know, a big model, um, we can directly call, you know, the functional module. Uh, this is more like uh, for pedagogical purposes so that we know like how do we implement a loss function because eventually eventually in for example if we ought to be a data scientist eventually we're solving like real life problems and eventually we ought to implement our loss function because every problem corresponds to like 
every problem is a new problem. So we, are, we, we eventually will need to implement our loss function someday somehow. Okay, so now next is, let me see if I covered all the uh, talking points uh, here. So uh, loss function, okay, next is apply gradient descent uh, on the model. So now let's learn uh, this, uh, um, the simplest Lego building function of, uh, um, of our like uh, torch and then module. So torch and then module has a very nice, let's import the package first. And this one is uh, um, like a summary. It, it tells us, for example, how many parameters our model has and uh, it tells us something very good, like uh, about the model. So for example, this is our model and, and how NN sequential is implemented is we basically, we call this NN sequential in this way. And we basically, we stack the layers in the sequential manner. So for example, our first layer converts, so 784, so I want to add a comment. 784 is nothing but uh, 28 by 28. So we basically, we reshape each 28 by 28 image, which is our training sample, to a 784 vector. So we, we basically, we put it, we flatten it into a long vector. And the first layer converts the 784 vector, which is our input, to a 128 vector. And then we let it go through the ReLU activation. So this is activation. And this is the second hidden layer. The second hidden layer converts um, a 128 uh, vector to a, like a, um, a 32 um, by nothing vector. Okay, so the first layer converts 784 to 128. So the second hidden, after activation, the second uh, hidden layer converts um, this vector from a 128, from a 128 long vector to a 38 um, vector, okay? Um, and this is like essential dimension reduction. It's like we extract its high level information from our image and then we let it go through a ReLU function. And, uh, uh, and then lastly, uh, you know, we get the output. So this is a, from the 32 of, this is a second last layer to like our last layer. Okay, so our last layer has one output and this output is gonna be put into the sigmoid function to get us a probability. So this is our model. Um, so this is output layer. And if we run it, okay, it becomes, so for example, it becomes, this is a sequential model, okay? And uh, one of its key, so one of its key um, attribute is uh, the parameters. Okay, let me add a code cell here. So for example, model, it has parameters. So this is, uh, so for example, uh, this is the generator, okay. Um, generator means we can iterate it. So for example, all we can do is we can for uh, weights in model parameters, we print, whoops, whoops, sorry, I forgot to do this. So then we print uh, the size, you know, the, the, the size of the weights. Um, so I think, yeah, some are biased. Let me, let me still use Torch. Uh, so Torch's uh, a tradition is using param. So param basically means parameters. So some of them are um, biases. So for example, so as we can see, this is the first weight matrix. Okay, transpose. But uh, um, so for example, the first, oh, sorry. This is the first weight matrix. The transpose is 784 by 128. Okay, so this is uh, this is exactly like the uh, untransposed, like 
what we uh, what we went through in the class, like demonstrate what we demonstrated in the class. This is the weight. It has 784 columns. So its input is a long 784 vector. And after the vector multiply with the weight, we get a 128 vector. Okay. So the 784 by 128 is the transpose. This is the original weight. And then this is our first bias. This is a weight matrix of the second layer. Second bias, weight matrix of last layer and the bias of the last layer. So these are the parameters. So weight biases, and this is our model. Right. First of all, it's a sequential and it had these, uh, you know, building blocks and uh, and the summary, like I uh, like I mentioned here, the summary is a nice function. So we can visualize and we can count how many parameters we have. So for example, for this one, we could do a uh, number of parameters equals zero and, uh, um, and then we can we can use new more functions so uh, so num params equals torch new more uh, param no oh, sorry this is plus okay so we print um, number of parameters it it actually tells us uh, how many parameters we have okay so number of params so we have this many parameters. So uh, 100, about 100,000 uh, parameters. Okay. So let me just add a comment. This is total number of parameters of this neural network. So we have this many parameters, you know, to do our binary classification problem. And for the summaries, the summary is actually um, more handy. We just put the model here and we put the input size. The input size means, uh, um, means input size. So the input size basically is the, a single data's dimension. So, and it must be, it's usually in tuple. So we just enter 784 by nothing. So this tuple, and if we hit around, so it tells us this is very handy. So it tells us how many parameters we have, how many trainable parameters we have, because later on in our, in our final project, when we train a neural network of, uh, with 20 million parameters, so some of the weights are non-trainable. So uh, we will train uh, like a given network. Um, and we have no non-trainable parameters. And uh, this is like the estimated file size, blah, blah, blah. And the, let me explain the minus one here. This is the number of parameters in each layer. So for example, the ReLU doesn't have any parameters, so it's zero. This, the output shape is 128. And why do we have minus one here? So minus one uh, actually means uh, batch size. Okay, so it, it, it's like a changeable. So minus one means it's not determined. It's determined by the data. So it depending on like how many data or how many data in our current batch. So this is a, this is a summary. And it, uh, as we can see, the number coincide with this number because the numeral is just uh, basically we count. Like for example, if it's a matrix, we just count how many entries uh, this matrix. So numeral, let, let me still add a comment here. So numeral function uh, counts the number of entries uh, in the matrix. Okay. So if it's a matrix, then um, then we just multiply its uh, row by column. If it's a tensor, like three-dimensional tensor, it's a weight time, I'm sorry, it's length times uh, uh, width times height. So uh, it's, uh, this is a numeral function, what numeral function does. Now, um, I think I'll skip this. So um, so let me, let, me, let me skip this and we'll cover this in next class because I'm kind of running out of time. And next is, we basically we implement gradient descent. So uh, this is our gradient descent. So the W represents our um, 
the neural network. And we basically, uh, we compute, so I need to add here. So evaluate uh, at uh, W equals WK. So we basically we evaluate the gradient at the current iteration and we subtract, you know, we choose a small learning rate and we we update our current weight and this is gradient descent. So um, and we want to implement it. Okay. And what happens here is um, we have to first prepare. So for example, um, the first one is we need to make sure how many like epochs we are going to train our model. What does epoch mean is, so it literally means uh, one epoch is we let our model see or train data once. Okay, so one epoch basically means if our, tr uh, if our uh, model sees, have seen the tr train data or train data once, then we finished one epoch. Okay. Um, and next is learning rate. Learning rate is basically alpha uh, right here. And then we build a, I mean, we build a simpler model. It's because uh, right now we are using CPU. So uh, I think we're using CPU right here. Uh, and now next is we uh, set X and Y. So X is essentially our train data. So X needs to have a shape or size minus one seven eighty four. Okay, so why we need to have that is because we need to flatten it into um, like uh, into the seven eight. So the minus one means batch size, so it means data size. Okay, so how do we do that? Is we can use this actually. So for example, minus one in the data size, we just, so for example, uh, we have, if we copy this, uh, if we run it, we'll see that this is our, how many data we have, okay? And then we reshape the train into our size and minus one. So the torch will automatically like flatten. So this is automatic flatten. The originally we had, so for example, the train new, um, if we put a size, we'll get, uh, it's 28 by 28. So each data is a 28 by 28 matrix. Then we flatten it into a 784 vector. So if we, uh, if we run this cell of code, we'll see that. So we have this many data, but the size the second dimension becomes 784. So the 28 by 28 matrix got flattened into a 784 vector. And now let's just train it. Okay. Um, so for example, we, we set the number of epoch to be 20. Um, and this is our training code. So first is we let the model, so we put the X into the model. The model is a function. And then we get Y hat. So Y hat is an output. Um, so uh, Y hat right now is a number, a real number, okay. And then we let, we put this Y hat into our sigmoid function. So Y hat now becomes a probability, okay. Um, and then we compare, so our loss is nothing but the y hat with y. So this is the cross entropy loss we just uh, uh, implemented. And this is a, a print um, the loss function. So by the way, it's a, it's a, it, it's a loss function. So uh, if we print its item, it's essentially we print its value. Okay, otherwise it's gonna be a tensor. So for example, if we compute um, if we compute this, you can try print lost. Then the, all the loss will get printed. For example, we have some backward and blah, blah, blah. So item only prints a value. And this is uh, we print the accuracy as well. Uh, for example, uh, how do we compute the accuracy is the Y hat is our probability. 
if this probability is closer to one, okay, if this probability is closer to one, we put the sample into class one. If the sample is closer to zero, we put this sample into, clo uh, into class zero. So then this single line of code basically computes, basically like reshape. So uh, let us give, let me give us an example. So for example, uh, if I have an ARR and uh, torch rand uh, N, and let me do sigmoid. So for example, uh, 10, okay. So if we print this AR, uh, we get, you know, like a, a 5, 0.51 something, 0 0.58, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, 0.55. So what we wanna do is we can use a single line of code. So we can use a single line of code uh, to convert it to um, like zero, uh, one label. So for example, we can convert it to a float. Um, if we do this without the float, we'll get true or false. Okay, so if we do this, as we can see, the first one has label one, second one has label one, third one has label zero. This has label one, this has label zero. Okay, so essentially we're doing the same thing. Um, yeah, let me, let me do float. Um, and then we just compare these two, okay? And then we take the mean of it. So um, this is accuracy. So these are some auxiliary uh, helper. And then next one is kind of important. So the model will store all the gradient. And before we apply the autograd, we need to zero the gradient of the model. Okay, so this is kind of important. Uh, this is like a formality of the torch. And then next is, again, we have to use this. We can try without this what happens, um, but uh, essentially we have to use this. And this is our gradient descent. So the pr parameter grad is essentially, so, um, so after calling the backward, okay, the parameter grad returns the gradient of each parameter. So now let's run this cell code. Okay, assertion error. Oh my God, my bad. So let me print the white hat. Size. So, oh. Really? Sigmoid. Okay. That's interesting. So white hat has this size now, which means like uh, we have to reshape uh, view. Okay. Um, minus one and one. So we have this and hopefully we don't have any more assertion error. So this is a assertion error I mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, we don't want to like our cross entropy loss being like that. So now let's run the code. Um, oh, it's cool. So for example, right now we have uh, zero iteration. We have lost this accuracy, this many, and then accuracy is becomes better and becomes even better. And uh, so gradually, you know, after each accuracy, so after twenty, uh, after twenty iteration, we reach uh, ninety-eight percent accuracy. You know, on the training data. So now let me just we have five minutes left. Let me de demonstrate how do we use GPU quickly. Okay, so change runtime type GPU save. Um. So let us load the data. Uh huh. Um, till here. Uh, 
Okay, oh, summary. Tensor is out on GPU. So um, I need to do a uh, device equals CUDA. Oh, out, oh, I see. But anyway, um, CPU. Okay, there we go. Um, so now let me demonstrate quickly how do we uh, use GPU. The GPU is a bit complicated because we have to first uh, set the device. So by default, the device is like CPU. But here we have to set the device. So uh, it's torch device. Um, so for example, the CUDA means GPU. And if torch CUDA is available, uh, so this means, so this line of code, it means we use GPU if GPU is available, otherwise we use CPU, okay. And what happens here, we need to like put our model to GPU. This is because uh, this is, ba this is uh, essentially, um, this is bounded by um, like our computer structure. So uh, because the GPU has to be, you know, GPU has a separate memory with our main, main memory. So after, okay, so we need to do this. We need to do model to device. Okay. So if we print our model, we will see that our model is in the, uh, okay, so let me do it later. So our model is now, basically after this, our model is in, uh, is in our GPU's memory. Okay. And then we copy the line of code right here. Um, so for example, we need to change several things. So for example, if our model is in GPU, we have to put our mo uh, put our variable in GPU as well. So this a simple way is we put this. Okay. So we first we set it to be float, and we put it in the CUDA, and we set the Y to be Y float, and we put it into CUDA. Um, and for example, here I do believe I have to put CPU here. Um, CPU. Let's try if it go through. Okay. Number of epoch is not defined, so let's just do twenty. Madam must be Madam two. Ah. Um. Okay, so what happens that? Why is that? No, oh, I need to put uh, this outside, I think. So let me just do it quickly. Okay. So for example, oh, sorry. So let me let me just end it here. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll update our GPU training code like sync to uh, GitHub. But I mean the GPU is more about a formality if uh, if we know how to write the code then we're good. So uh, that's it for today, um, and uh, see you guys next week. Okay. So let me stop recording and uh, let me finish this.